Hello, higher class, and welcome to your third lesson of the week, which is the impact of emotional factors on performance. Very similar to lesson one, but this is about our emotional factors. And it's really important that you know each factor um, in terms of how to be able to describe, explain, analyze, and evaluate its impact on performance. So the emotional factors are the factors that involve feelings. For example, anxiety, anger, happiness, and confidence, etc., etc. So our factor for our other activities were confidence for the volleyball lot, and the, it was anger for volleyball and football. But today, for a softball, we're going to be looking at anxiety. So what is anxiety? Well, anxiety is an emotion characterised by feelings of tension, worried thoughts and physical changes like increased blood pressure and muscle tension. Watch the following video to see the relationship between anxiety and sport. It goes into a lot of detail, but it's just a good thing to learn. So for SQA theory, you need to be able to describe, explain, analyse and evaluate the impact of emotional factors on performance as well. Similar to concentration, anxiety can impact in two ways in softball, when you're batting and when you're fielding, and we're going to keep it as simple as that. We're going to make it even simpler and we're going to break it down into two effects of anxiety. This is in batting. We're going to be talking about the muscle that tension that's created from the anxiety. And in fielding, we're going to talk about how when you experience anxiety, you freeze. Thinking about these two effects that I gave you in the last slide, in your jotter or piece of paper, give one brief example of how anxiety can impact performance in softball for fielding and batting. So how does freezing affect you in fielding? And how would muscle tension in your arm affect your batting technique? Now it's time to review your answer. In batting, you could have said something along the lines of, I have muscle tension in my arms and this restricts my batting swing and I hit the ball with less power. Okay, now go on and try, you're gonna check and change your fielding answer, but don't move to the next slide until you've finished your fielding answer. So for fielding, you could have said something along the lines of when the ball is batted towards me or thrown towards me, I freeze and I don't catch the ball. So we need to be able to explain this in SQA language using our FACI answer structure. Now, just to recap, we have added in an A to the FCI an answer structure just to make sure that we put the activity in. So we'll be looking at factor, activity, Context, context and impact, which always starts with meaning. What I want you to do now is stop, um, going through the PowerPoint just now, and attempt this for anxiety in softball. For number one, you'll do it for a batting. For number two, you'll do it for fielding. Do it in your jot or a piece of paper and make sure you do it, because otherwise you're just skipping through this PowerPoint and we're not actually learning anything. Now it's time to check and change your, change your answers. Make sure you do this, that's the learning. Move on to the next slide when you're ready. So for fielding, it would look like this. Factor, anxiety can impact performance activity in softball. The context would be, I may freeze when I'm fielding, when the ball is battered or thrown to me. So that's what's happening to you at that point. That's what you would see. And then the impact on performance would be, meaning I do not catch the ball and the batter gets further around the bases or home. Check and change your work. For batting, your explain answer would be factor. Activity can impact performance. Anxiety can impact performance. We all make mistakes. Activity is in softball. The context, which would be, I may get muscle tension in my arms when batting. And the impact would be, meaning my swing is restricted and I hit the ball with less power, making it easier to field and I don't get as far around the bases. That's the full impact on performance. Make sure you add in all that detail to your answers. Now we're moving on to describe. To describe, we don't require any answer structure or acronyms, which is those letters we use at the side. Meanings, because, so, therefore, as a result of. We don't need any language like that. Just using a valuable writing time to do that. Just paint a picture of what is happening, like you're a commentator. Now we're going to attempt a blackout task. I want you to copy down these two answers in your jotter, make sure you do it. And then I want you to score out what's not needed in these describe answers. What would change it from an explain answer to a describe by removing these words? 
uh, don't move on to the next slide until you've done that. And here are your answers for your blackout test. So check and change and see if you've done the correct scoring out there. Have you removed because and meaning from the first answer there? And have you removed and as a result and therefore to the second answer? Those are, are all explain uh, pieces of language that you don't need in your describe answers. And if you don't have them, it shows that you fully understand that you know how to describe. And now we're moving on to analyse your APAS questions. So really focus in on this, but you know, it's pretty easy. It's very similar to explain answers, but you've just got to make sure that you put the right acronyms next to your uh, answers there. So to break something down into parts, uh, that's what analyse is asking you to do. And we're breaking it down into fielding and batting and also the effects of anxiety. We freeze um, and we also get muscle tension. Again, it's pretense. It hasn't happened yet. So don't write as though it's happened. So we break it down into I, 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 which is identify. So that's when you would say what factor and activity. So that's similar to your F and your A for explain. And then we have implications, what might happen. So this is the possibilities of what might happen as, as a result of what you said and identify. And then the impact is, well, what's the impact on performance then? So we'll move on to the next slide. So all I want you to do now is attempt to turn your explain answers into two analyze answers. So two I, I, I's. Do this on your piece of paper and jotter or jotter. Make sure you do it. Otherwise, you're honestly, you're not you're not going to be learning that much. We need to make mistakes um, to learn from them or we need to do things and see that we've actually achieved something which makes us feel good and we want to work harder. OK. So it's now time to check and change your answers. The fielding answer would be identify. Anxiety can have can impact performance in softball. The implications of that would be I may freeze when I'm fielding, when the ball is battered or thrown to me. And the impact of that would be meaning I do not catch the ball and the batter gets further around the bases or home. So check and change your answers and make sure that you get all the correct detail in there. Add anything that you need to do or take away anything that you don't need. And here's your batting answer. Make sure you have attempted this before you use this answer to check and change. Um, it would be identify. Anxiety can impact performance in softball. The implications of that is I may get muscle tension in my arms when batting. And the impact of that would be meaning my swing is restricted uh, and I hit the ball with less power, making it easier to field and I don't get as far around the bases. And now we're moving on to evaluate, finally. To form an idea or to decipher whether something that happened was good or bad. That's what it means to evaluate. Key point here is post tense. It has happened. So you're speaking within the post tense. Um, and that means you're using I, J and V to identify whether it's good or bad, this factor, um, and what activity it's in. For the judgment, you're saying what happened. It's not what's going to happen. It's not the possibilities like anxiety, uh, like analyze. It's what happened, what actually happened. Now, I know this is difficult for you guys because uh, we haven't actually done this in the game yet um, physically, but you have played it for quite a long time in school. So hopefully you will have experienced. Well, I don't hope that you've experienced anxiety, but you might have experienced this. Um, and the value of that is what is the value impact of what happened on performance. So if you're making a judgment of what happened, what was the value of it? What was the impact of what happened on performance? Here is an example of that. It's from concentration from yesterday, because I'm not going to give you the answers to it yet, but it's just to give you a, a recap of the examples there. So identify would be concentration can impact performance in softball. So you've said the factor and how it could impact the performance in softball. The judgment would be, I took my eye off the ball when fielding and missed the throw being made to me on the base. So I took my eye off the ball when fielding and missed the throw being made to me in the base. The value of that is meaning the batter got further around the bases and was safe, got home or got home to score a point. You could say either or. All in the post tense and broken down into I, J and V. Now what I want you to do is break this answer down into I, J and V. So do that in your jotters just now. And now it's time to check and change your answer. Don't do it until you've actually done it on the piece of paper. Here's your identify, judgment and value. I'll just let you do that yourself. So check if you've got that correct. 
Now I'd like you to decide which of these answers, what command words uh, would have been used to um, make sure that these answers come out. So is number one, analyze or evaluate, or is number two, analyze or evaluate? Just write number one and two down on your jotter's piece of paper and analyze or evaluate next to it. And here are your answers. Number one was analyze because that was pretense and number two was evaluate because it was post tense. And now what I'd like you to do is, what are the command words to these answers? So you've got four there, take your time to figure out what number one, two, three and four is um, and decide what command word would have been asked to get these answers. Make sure you do it. And here are your answers. So number one could have been analyze or explain, but obviously when we're doing it in the exam, make sure that you put the right letters down. So if you're doing an explain answer, make sure you're doing F-A-C-I, don't write the analyze one. I, 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 when you're doing an explain one. It doesn't really give the marker a, a good image of whether you know something or not. And we want them to have confidence in your answers. Number two is describe. Number three was evaluate. And number four was analyze, explain. Well done if you got them right. Now here's your extension task for today. If you are running short of time and that's taking you longer than you expected for this period, um, what I would like you to do is uh, know that this is there for you to do as an extension task but I would quite like you all to attempt this as an extension task um, for today and answer these questions. It's in assignments as a quiz um, so give them a go because it's always good to recap on what we did before Christmas. Well done everybody, take care. I'm online.